Okay, Assalamualaikum and welcome to the video. In this video, we are going to look at the third subtopic in chapter 2, Kinematic uh, Linear Motion. Okay, in this video, we are looking at the projectile motion. So, I have two clips on the slide right now. If you look at on the first clip on the left, so in this clip, you have uh, a cannon that is at an angle of 90 degree to the horizontal. Alright, so when you fire the ball from that cannon, the ball is going is only going to have uh, a vertical displacement. Okay, we call that displacement as SY, displacement in the Y axis. So, uh, for this kind of motion, uh, you only have, uh, the motion is only one uh, dimension. Alright, so the motion is only on the Y axis. Okay, on the second uh, clip here on the left, oh, sorry, on the right, uh, the ball is now, the cannon is now moved uh, to a different angle. So, in this clip, uh, the angle is 45 degree to the horizontal. So, as you can see, uh, the trajectory uh, of the cannonball, it takes the parabolic path. So, instead of just going up, it going both up and forward at the same time. Alright, so we uh, so for this particular subtopics, we are going to make use of the vector, uh, the basic vector analysis. Alright, so we are going to treat the velocity and the acceleration as a vector, and then for the case of uh, a projectile at an angle, alright, to the horizontal from zero to ninety degree, alright, you you need to resolve, you need to be able to do resolving vector. So there are those are the prerequisites that you need to know before you can dive in into the topic. So in projectile motion, in the case where the ball is moving straight up or down, uh, the only force that is acting on the object, the only force that we consider is the force of gravity. Alright, so the force of gravity, if we write the equation here, force is equals to mass times the acceleration of the object and the force is going to be the net force the sum of all the forces so because we only consider the gravity so the force acting on the ball is the weight of the ball and the direction of the force is downwards all right so this is the weight and the equation for the weight of the ball is equals to mass times the acceleration of the gravity all right the value of the gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meter per second square all right so uh, the acceleration of an object in projectile motion so acceleration of an object in projectile motion is going to be equals to uh, the negative of the gravitational acceleration the reason being, so the gravitational acceleration, AG, so AG stands for the uh, gravitational acceleration, alright, so will be equals to negative of G, alright, the gravitational acceleration of an, ob the acceleration of the object is going to be equals to negative G, alright, so because we only have one force acting on the object, alright. Okay, so means that the value of AG is equals to negative 9.81 MF negative 2. Alright, because, uh, uh, because we are dealing with vector quantity, uh, we need to consider the direction of motion. So normally we would uh, draw a Cartesian. Alright, so we have X. So, we are going to base our direction on the Cartesian. So, because the ball is moving downwards, right? So, the displacement, so the displacement of the ball is going to be negative. So, let's say the height of the ball is from the ground is 100 meter. Alright, so we are going to take the initial point of the ball as the origin, the point of origin. So, uh, when the ball uh, falls to the ground, so it travels a distance of 100 meter and then it hits the ground there. 
right? So the displacement of the ball is going to be negative 100 meter. So you have to be very careful with the sign of the vector displacement, the vector velocity and vector acceleration. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to highlight it again. Uh, the value of the acceleration, gravitational, the acceleration of the object is going to be equals to the gravitational acceleration. Alright. So I'm going to highlight it again. The value of the acceleration of the object, okay, AG stands for the acceleration of the object, is going to be equals to the negative G. And this value is constant value. Okay, okay, this value is constant and always negative. Okay, you are not going to have a uh, value of uh, uh, AG as positive because AG is always pointing downwards and the uh, value is constant acceleration. So, uh, in the second subtopic where we look at uniform accelerated motion, uh, the value of, uh, you, you need to find, sometimes you need to look for the value of the acceleration using uh, the equation, the three equation or maybe four uh, that uh, is provided to you. So, in this uh, uh, type of motion, in these subtopics, the acceleration is known. All right, you already know the acceleration of the object. All right, so if the object is uh, on Earth, so the acceleration is go always going to be negative 9.81 meter per second. All right, okay. So uh, for this part of the motion, where the motion is only uh, in the y axis, we call this type of motion as one dimensional motion, meaning that it's only move either up or down. All right, okay. So in uniform accelerated motion, we have basically uh, three equation that we can use, all right, to either find velocity, displacement, acceleration, or time. The first one is V equals to U uh, plus AT, and then we have S equals to uh, UT plus half a t square and then we have another one v square u square plus 2 a s so there will be a slight modification to the equation all right so in projectile projectile uh, the y axis uh, will have the gravitational acceleration so we will change uh, we will modify the equation a little bit so instead of just V, we are going to write Vy, V of Y, meaning that this is the vertical velocity of the object, okay, the final vertical velocity, and then U will become Uy, and then for the A, uh, because of the gravitational acceleration, A of G, okay, acceleration due to the gravity, is equals to negative G, so we already include the negative there, so uh, the negative is 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 uh, telling us about the direction of the acceleration. So we are going to modify the equation from v equals to u plus a t into v y equals to u y minus. Okay, don't forget the minus sign there. So the minus is telling us the direction of the gravity is downwards. All right, and then times with t. Alright, so that is the only modification that we made to the equation. Alright, for the second equation, instead of just S, so we are going to have SY equals to UYT, and then we are going to add the minus because of the direction of the gravity, and then, oh, I forget the half at the front. Alright, so we have half at the front, half G T square, and then finally we have V square equals to U square, so we have also have the minus, minus 2G times S. The 2 should be in black, so but just forgive me for, for I, mean, I think I'm going to just correct that, alright, okay. 
2gs so we include the minus sign into the equation and then we uh, put a subscript of y so the subscript of y indicates that all the velocity displacement uh, in the y exists i forgot to put the y at the last equation all right so this is the new equation that uh, we are going to use all right so uh, let's look at one example how the velocity change with time all right so what we have here uh, if we look at the first equation uh, the equation of v equals to u minus gt and the value of g u equals to sorry uh, the value of g is 9.81 so we can write it as uh, minus 9.81 times t so uh, for every second for every second u will minus 9.81 times 1 so every second the value of v will become u minus 9.81 all right okay we, we will look at uh, how uh, this uh, work in the next slide but uh, what I'm, I'm what I'm trying to show you in this slide is that uh, because V is a vector so the length of the vector uh, will tell us about the magnitude of the velocity so let's say you have a ball that is dropped from rest so the initial velocity of the ball is 0 meter per second so the moment it release it will have uh, 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 will gain some velocity Okay, but uh, the velocity is very small that's why you have a very short vector but as time as the ball falls down the vector velocity will get longer and longer okay this indicates that you have increasing velocity okay the velocity is increasing but in negative direction the reason why the velocity is increasing because the direction of the velocity is the same as the direction of the acceleration so the value of the velocity will become negative and negative and more negative all right so but uh, one thing that we need to be careful here is because we have constant acceleration here all right so the value the vector a will always have the same length okay all right the vector a will have the same length so i'm going to delete that I'm just going to select this part of the equation it turns out that uh, it's not possible so i'm going to draw it again but i need to make sure that the length of a is the same all right so it is very similar to the second subtopic where we have a uh, uniform accelerated motion where the value of the acceleration is the same except for these subtopics the acceleration is in the y direction instead of the x and it we already know the value of the gravitation the acceleration which is equals to 9.81 ms negative 2 so uh, in this slide we are going to look at uh, how the vy and sy change uh, every second all right from the equation that we have established before we know that the value of vy is equals to uy minus gt so the value of g is 9.81 times t so because we are looking at the interval of one second so we can rewrite the equation into uh, we can substitute the value of t equals to one so uh, our velocity is going to be initial velocity minus with 9.81 okay uh, in the case where we are dropping the ball so the velocity of the ball is downwards and the acceleration of the ball is also downwards meaning that the velocity will increase because v and a is in the same direction so the velocity of the ball will increase by negative 9.81 every second so if you substitute the value of uy here let's say the ball is dropped from rest zero meter per second so if you substitute the value into the equation so uy equals to 0 minus 9.81 so you will get a velocity of negative 
meter per second. That is the velocity after one second. So we have negative 9.81 uh, meter per second. In the next second, the velocity is going to increase by negative 9.81. So negative 9.81 increase by negative 9.81 we have uh, 19.62 if i'm not mistaken so 19.62 meter per second and then the next second uh, the value of the velocity increase again by negative 9.81 so we are going to have uh, 29 negative 29.43 and then the next second the velocity is going to increase again by negative 9.81 so it's going to be negative uh, 39.24 39.24 alright as you can see every second the velocity increase by 9.81 so that is what uh, constant acceleration means constant acceleration means that every second you are going to have uh, the same uh, upper, the same change in the velocity for every second okay the same uh, amount of change of velocity in every second all right so in the second case where we toss the ball upwards so the ball start with an initial velocity upwards so uh, let's say we take the initial velocity of the ball as uh, 39.24 the final velocity of the ball when we drop the ball so uh, but now we are going to lose the negative because uh, the direction of the velocity is upwards so we have initial velocity of ne uh, positive 29.24 so if we draw the vector of acceleration vector of acceleration is downwards so they are in opposite direction to the uh, vector velocity so what's going to happen is the value of the velocity uh, is going to decrease by 9.81 every second. So it start off with 39.24 and then it's going to decrease to 20, uh, sorry, 39. So it's going to decrease to uh, 29.43 okay, after one second. And then the next second is going to decrease again to 19.62 and then to 9. 0.81 and then the next second finally the velocity goes to zero okay so the moment uh, the velocity goes to zero so it, the ball goes up with decreasing velocity as you can see here the velocity is decreasing okay the value the, the magnitude we've only focused on the magnitude here so the positive is is uh, telling us the ball is moving upwards and the magnitude is decreasing so at the point until it reaches the point here where the velocity is zero so at this point we have the velocity vy equals to zero uh, and the displacement sy at the moment where vy is equals to zero we call this as a maximum height so maximum height is when the vy the value of the velocity of the vertical velocity is zero that is where the maximum height uh, of the ball of the object all right so that is how you calculate the maximum height of the object that is very important and it's it's very uh, and this kind of question is uh, frequently asked in the exam to find the maximum height so you need to bear in mind that x maximum height the velocity the vertical velocity of the ball is zero because uh, as the ball moving upwards the velocity is decreasing okay for the sy i think i'm going to leave it to you to do it yourself and see how the displacement uh, change for uh, for every second all right so that you can do it on your own and uh, if you have any question on the sy we can discuss that during our google meet session so uh, as a summary for these topics, uh, I'm going to use an example where a ball is fired uh, from an elevated platform 100 meter above the ground. So let's say uh, the initial velocity of the ball uh, is equals to, we write it here, 
u equals to let's say 60 meter per second so because the initial velocity is positive means that uh, the direction of the vector velocity is upwards so the ball is tossed upwards or shots upwards with uh, an initial velocity of uh, 60 meter per second okay uh, because the direction of the acceleration is downwards so we know that this velocity is going to decrease every second so uh, i'll draw the a acceleration due to the gravity is equals to negative 9.81 meter per second square means that the velocity is going to change by 9.81 meter per second every second so because the sign is different here so means that the value of u is going to decrease so as the ball goes up until the ball gets to here so when the ball gets to here the velocity vy of the ball is equals to zero and this point and at this point the value of sy is called the uh, maximum high of the ball okay all right okay and the height sy as i as i mentioned uh, in the video we take the initial position initial position of the ball as our origin all right so if you draw uh, a cartesian uh, on the motion of the ball so this is our point of origin so sy is measured from the origin to the highest point here so this is the maximum height of the ball okay so uh, you can use three equation to find the either velocity of the ball equals to u minus g which is 9.81 times t so you can find the velocity of the ball at any moment in time or you want to find the vertical displacement i forgot to include the y again so or you want to find the vertical displacement of the ball at any moment in time you can use this equation so u y times t minus half uh, times 9.81 t square or we can rewritten it as u y t minus 4.905 t square so half of g is 4.905 so this will give us the value of the vertical displacement measured so sy is measured from the origin this is the point of origin we take this point as point of origin all right okay and then we have v y square equals to u y square minus uh, 2 times 9.81 times s y or u y square minus 2 times 9.81 is negative 19.62 s y right so uh, a quick ex uh, <coughs> a quick note here let's say uh, the ball with a velocity of 60 meter per second so the maximum height reached by the ball so we can use the third equation to find the maximum height so we can use v y square equals to u y square uh, minus 16.92 s y we know that at maximum height the vy is equals to zero so we have the initial velocity of 60 square minus 19.62 sy so we can calculate the maximum height xy equals to 60 square divided by 19.62 okay so we get uh, 183 0.49 meter all right so this is the uh, maximum height of the ball okay uh, let's say you want to find the uh, 
uh, velocity of the ball when the ball let's say reach the ground or where the ball hit the ground so you the goal goes up to the maximum high and then it come back down past the origin and then it hits the ground down here okay so how do you calculate the velocity vy of the ball uh, at the ground so we are going to use the same equation the third equation so vy square equals to uy square so uy square is still uh, 60 meter per second this is our initial velocity minus 19.62 all right so what is the value of sy when the ball is at is on the ground so this is the point of origin so because the ball is now below the point of the origin and 100 meter below the point of origin so the displacement of the object is negative 100 so i'm going to leave it to you to uh, solve the equation you can find the value of uh, final velocity of the ball when the ball hits the ground i think that summarizes everything on the first part of projectile motion where the motion is perpendicular perfectly perpendicular at 90 degrees uh, to the horizontal all right we are going to continue with uh, the second part of projectile motion okay this is a trajectory of uh, an object that is in uh, uh, in a projectile or it is fired at an angle to the horizontal okay in these topics uh, there are two uh, important uh, requirement that you need to fulfill before uh, you can dive in into the topics the first is you need to be able to do resolving vector so uh, if you are still uh, not quite familiar with resolving vector so i advise you to go back and uh, study about resolving vector it is not very it is not that difficult all right so the resolving vector uh, resolving vector is basically you are breaking down the vector into its perpendicular component so let's say uh, most of the time you are going to be resolving the vector velocity all right let's say we have a vector velocity here so this is the vector velocity you are going to break down the vector velocity into its uh, horizontal length vx and uh, the vertical length vy all right so this is the angle basically you are doing the uh, right angle triangle analysis uh, to find the uh, horizontal length and the vertical length of v so v is the length of the hypotenuse all right and then the second one is uh, you need to be able to find in terms of a vector analysis you need to be able to find uh, the direction okay the direction of vector okay the direction of vector is basically the angle of the vector to the horizontal all right normally we are going to use the tangent so if you are uh, looking for the direction of the vector velocity so the y component is going to be the length of the vertical uh, component of the velocity and then the x component is going to be the length of vector velocity or length of the horizontal uh, vector velocity all right so if you look at the trajectory of the uh, projectile you can see that uh, the ball uh, is climbing up and also moving forward so there are two types of motion there so you have two types of displacement so the first displacement is forward so you have horizontal displacement sx and then at the same time the ball is climbing up so it's gaining height so it also have displacement of sy so that is why you have to uh, break down the vector velocity into x and y right because you have two 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 motions here you have forward motion and then you have upwards motion at the same time so let's say your ball gets to here the, the yellow ball gets to here so the moment it gets to this point so it has traveled a distance of uh, sx and then uh, it has moved up by uh, a distance of sy 
So it has to, you need to break down the velocity into x and y component to find the value of sx and xy. The, the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement. Okay, that is the uh, basically the first the first things, all right? That you need to uh, to know, all right? Resolving and direct the direction. Okay, the second point that you need to pay attention to is uh, is the acceleration of the object in projectile motion. So as we have discussed before, the acceleration. Uh, of the object in projectile are due to the gravity so we call that acceleration as ag acceleration due to the gravity which is equals to negative g equals to negative 9.81 ms negative 2 uh, if you can remember from the from, uh, almost at the beginning of the video i have uh, explained that uh, in projectile motion the only force that is acting on the object is the gravitational force. All right, and gravitational force is only acting on the y axis. So meaning that we don't have acceleration in the x axis. So kalau if you if you look at the the ax against t here, the value of acceleration is zero, means that we have no change. So we have no change in the horizontal velocity of the projectile all right so it means that we have no change in the horizontal velocity of the projectile i'm going to clear this uh, bottom part here all right so meaning that if you draw the vector of the velocity vx right so let's say it takes up uh, one, two, three. Let's say this is the vector velocity v x. So let's say at time t equals to one. So at times t equals to two, the length of the vector is going to be the same. There is no change in the horizontal velocity of the projectile. It's going to stay the same throughout the motion. Okay, this is a very important part of of uh, projectile motion. Okay, you do not have acceleration in the x axis means that your horizontal velocity of the projectile does not change okay you only have change in the velocity in the y axis okay because a y all right the acceleration in the y axis is equals to negative g which is equals to negative 9.81 meter per second every second I'm going to demonstrate this point in the next slide. So let's go to the next slide. So if you if you can see here, so this is the same trajectory. Is if you can see from the trajectory, I've drawn to it's drawn for you the vector vx. So as you can see, the vector vx always has the same length. It does not change with time. So velocity of vx will always equals to the uh, the initial velocity of vx okay uh, i'm going to label the first one as ux okay to indicate that that is the initial velocity so this is the initial velocity of ux and it's going to be the same throughout the motion okay so how about the y uh, the y velocity the y the vertical velocity so initially you probably going to have uh, a very long uh, ui uh, velocity if you can still remember from uh, our previous discussion where we show that when the ball is moving upwards so the vector velocity is getting shorter and shorter so uh, it's getting shorter so and shorter until it reach where sorry i have to label it as vy so only the beginning is ui so we are going to label this as vy and then this is also as vy so this is one this is two this is three four five six all right so this is vy1 vy2 as you can see the length start to decrease so at this point vy3 is equals to zero 
So at this point, this is the maximum height of the projectile. So if you measure the uh, height from the ground, so from here to the ground there, so this height is maximum height, H max, which is SY max. So at SY max, we have VY equals to zero. And then uh, as the ball start to drop, so as the ball start to drop, the, the velocity vector start to increase in length. So, but it, it is increasing in the opposite direction. So you have that, and then the velocity is going to increase, but in the negative direction. And then finally, the length is going to be uh, longer and longer and then and longer. Okay, I have cleared out the slides. So what would be the implications of the changing uh, of the vector vy with time? If you can still remember, the way we calculate, the equation that we use to calculate the uh, angle of the vector velocity is uh, we are using tangent. And then at the top of the equation, all right, we have vy and then at the bottom we have vx. So tangent theta, theta is basically the direction, theta is the directions of the vector velocity, alright, uh, from horizontal, from horizontal, alright, <clears throat> so this is the uh, angle or the direction of the vector velocity. So the angle or the direction of the vector velocity is dependent on the value of Vy and Vx. So because we the value of Vy is changing with time, so the angle of velocity is, is also going to change with time. Okay, I'm going to use the FAT simulation, PHET, to explain the projectile launch at an angle. So I've set the firing angle at 50 degree here and then uh, I set the initial speed to 15 meter per second and then I uncheck the air resistant box here. So we are only looking at the, the case where the only force acting on the projectile is the force of gravity. So we remove the air resistance and then uh, if we fire the projectile, so that is the trajectory of the projectile. If I move the uh, target pad, so the distance, if we want to measure the range of the projectile, so the range of the projectile is measured from uh, where the ball lands to the point where it was fired from. So we put it there, so if we measure the length, so it's going to give us around 22, sorry, 22.6, so this is this value here. So the distance, the horizontal distance, or the horizontal displacement from the firing point to where the ball lands is called the range of the projectile. So if you want to measure the... Uh, Maximum height, so we are going to measure the maximum height from uh, the ground. So the ground is our reference. So we are going to measure the maximum height from the ground. So we move it a little bit there. So, okay, so we move it there. So that is the uh, maximum height measured from the ground. 6.81 meter. Or uh, instead of using the uh, the measuring tape, we can just use this. Uh, this will tell us automatically the value. So the range is uh, eleven point two nine. Eleven point two nine is from here. Is from here to half of the uh, half of the uh, range. All right. So at this point, it is half. It is uh, eleven point two nine and. Uh, Maximum height is 6.73. If we put at this point, you have a different time, different range, and different height. So same goes for this point. 
So if you put on the green point, so the height is the maximum height. If you put at the end here, so the height is zero. The height is zero, the range is 22.59 and the time is 2.34. So that is uh, the uh, SY, SX and Okay, now we are going to look at the acceleration vector on the projectile. So I tick on the acceleration vector. So if I launch it again, as you can see, the acceleration vector, the length of the acceleration vector does not change. It stays the same. Okay, if you look at the velocity vector, okay, just the velocity vector, you will see that the horizontal component of the velocity stays the same length but the vertical is changing all right so it's changing the length is changing with time and at this point the vertical uh, velocity is zero it has no length at the maximum height all right so if we look at the total of the velocity vector so you will see that the resultant or the total of the velocity vector the direction of the velocity is changing because of the velocity because of the vertical velocity of the vector is also changed okay i think that is it for the simulation you can try it you can try it yourself uh, just type uh, phet projectile simulation and it will take you to this this website okay thank you so from the equation we can see that the angle of v is going to be dependent on the value of vy and because vy is changing with time so the length of vy is changing with time so you have a longer length there a shorter one and then a much shorter and then no uh, no um, uh, vertical velocity at the top so as you can as you probably see that uh, the direction of vector v is going to change uh, along the direction along the trajectory of the uh, projectile okay i'm going to clear that that out as well so meaning that uh, on every point so we are going to label again so a b c d e f and g so uh, at every point on the trajectory we can either uh, let's say we have a ux here so at point b the ux is the same so the vx is ux the value does not change so except for the vy so vy is changing so meaning that at point b you can find the v the new value of vy at point b and then at point b the ball is going to have vertical displacement s y at b all right and then it's going to have the horizontal displacement uh, s x at b and then and then you can also find the uh, angle of the velocity okay the direction of the velocity uh, at uh, point b so you can repeat the same calculation for point c d e f and g so uh, the value of theta vy sy and sb is going to be different for every point on the trajectory so the things that are going to be the same are the vx vx is always equals to ux uh, and then uh, ax will always equals to zero and then ay is always equals to negative 9.81 ms negative 2 so the thing that I've, I've written in this part of the uh, slides is uh, the quantity that are going to stay the same throughout the trajectory and then for this part here so this part is going to be different okay uh, the ball at point c will have its own uh, direction of the velocity at point c and then vy at point c sy at point c and fx at point c and obviously they are at a different times so t uh, at point b is tb t at point c is tc 
uh, it, it is best that uh, you try to solve or do the example questions in the modern module and the aura to see how the how the, the concept will be applied uh, in solving the questions I think that is all that uh, I need to explain uh, on this particular section uh, if you have uh, any anything that uh, bothers you you can ask me in our uh, google meet session i'll see you there and don't forget to try the module mutual questions and the aura questions thank you very much